Guys, welcome back. This was going to be today's project. An old Dell Dimension 8200 with a P4. I don't know anything about it yet. I haven't even plugged it in. I know it was given to me and told it was a junk computer. So we were going to find out how junk it really was. But instead, I had a customer call me and he's got this. This is an HP uh, Ryzen gaming computer. And he tried to flash the BIOS on this. And uh, in the process of it, you know, doing it through Windows, he says it locked up. He waited a while and then restarted it. And of course, it's now become a brick. So this is the project we're going to work on today. So let me get set up and uh, we'll first verify the issue and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, and for starters, the uh, uh, this is actually an HP Pavilion Gaming 690-0013W. So uh, that's where we're at. I'm going to plug it in and like I said, we'll verify the issue here. Okay, we just got some crazy beep code, so. Let's take a look on the inside here. Okay, this is my first look inside of one of these. And I, one thing I do know about this, he had asked about a, you know, he wanted to change the case in it. And this is a proprietary motherboard. Your front connectors are actually connected to the motherboard. And the motherboard's got a little, like, bump out in the front. So this motherboard isn't, it is very proprietary. It wouldn't be compatible with any other case. Um, so to get inside here, it looks like I've got a couple screws that got to come out of here. Seems like our hang up on there was the optical drive. Alright, this whole thing comes out. This uh, power op is just disconnects right down to the motherboard. Once this is that away, we can see pretty much everything. Now let's start by reseating the memory. That's a pretty lame looking little stick of RAM in there. All right, yeah, that didn't help any. This is an interesting setup here. This one is marked main ATX, so it doesn't have a 24 pin. There's a four pin that plugs in there. There's an extra four pin. And there's a four pin that plugs in here for the CPU. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So yeah, that's uh, pretty interesting. Let me try to Clear the CMOS in here. We'll see if that does any good. Yeah, you can see the, I don't know if you can see right here. I'm sure you better look at this. If you look at the motherboard here, you can see 
the shape of the motherboard with the front connectors attached to it. So yeah, that's not really going to fly in any other case. Alright, let's see if that did any good. Alright, that didn't do anything. Alright, let's throw in a different stick of RAM. I'm pretty sure that, you know, he bricked the BIOS in here, but I have to rule out everything else. Alright, so it wasn't that. The only other thing to change is the CPU, and I really don't think that's going to matter. Alright, so after checking on the HP website again and re-reading it and rereading it a few times, um, now it's telling me, you know, you're supposed to put the flash, the, put the uh, BIOS flash on a USB flash drive, and uh, it's got two options. One, you hold Windows B while holding the power button for two to three seconds or the other one is you hit the power button and then immediately hold uh, Windows B so let's give this a try and see if this works Hmm, okay, well, this time it stopped beeping. Alright. Here we go. That was actually it. So that was a little easier than I thought. That's hopefully... I, I have the latest BIOS on this flash drive, so hopefully uh, this will go through and continue. And we can get this little machine fixed up for him. This appears like it's going to take quite a while. And this is probably what happened. It probably sat here like this for a while and he probably uh, restarted it. But you can see it is writing new BIOS image. Alright, so all I had to do was get a new BIOS on a flash drive, and you see we put on a flash drive here, and uh, we powered on, we held down the Windows and the B key, held the power button down for 2-3 uh, seconds, and then let it go. It beeped 8 times, then it was silent, then we finally got it up here on the screen, so... It's definitely going to take a little while, so uh, I'm just going to speed this along here, and uh, we'll check on it when it's done. All right, and through one stage of it. All 
All right. So there we go. It says it is complete. And even though it said on there, uh, can take a few minutes. That's a lie. This has been going on for over half an hour now, but at least it's able to recover the BIOS on here. So we're restarting now and uh, let's see what happens. Now it seems the PC restarted, but showing nothing on the screen yet. We'll give it a minute here. Yow! Watch those fans. And you can see it's working. Right here we go. All right. The system BIOS recovery has recurred. Enter to continue startup. All right. Boot device not found yet. We know that. So let me go into setup here. Now you know what? Uh, we'll figure it out here. Um, for now, you know, we do got to do a bit of an upgrade on this. So let me shut it down. Unplug the power. And I don't recall what. I think this is an eight gigabyte stick of RAM in here. As I said, pretty lame looking stick of RAM. So he definitely wants the RAM upgraded. And I've got a kit here, and no, it's it, it's not this right here. Although this is a really good kit of RAM, this uh, PC4 4400 from Viper Steel. Um, on my 2700, we tested this out on my 20, Ryzen 2700, and uh, we were able to uh, set it to 3600, uh, 12, 14, 14, 14 with no problems, and it's now running in a 3950X system at uh, 3800, I believe, uh, C14 down the board, uh, nice and comfortably. But what we got here is uh, just some Corsair. Uh, this is uh, 3200 C16. Yeah, 3200 C16. I'll just make sure I put it in the right way. All right, so let's hook up all the drives and everything again. Oh, before I do that, I'll just show you guys something here. Now you can see right there it says ROM recovery and there's some pins there. I'm sure there's a way to, uh, you know, you short those out when you start it up and it basically brings you into the same thing. And there's a BIOS chip right there. And, uh, you know, I, I probably could have recovered this faster just by using the EEPROM programmer with the clip on there. But um, it's kind of nice that, you know, you, you do have the option that they did actually include that in here where if you are uh, if you break your BIOS trying to update it, you just hit the hold the Windows and the B key down and then hold the power button for like two to three seconds. And then uh, you'll hear it beep. It beeped eight times. And it went right to the BIOS recovery screen, and uh, you you know you do have to put the BIOS on a on a flash drive, and you just download it. It's an EXE file, and it will go through and format the flash drive and put the BIOS files on it, and it'll read right off of that. So you put in your flash drive, hold the Windows B keys, and hold the power button for two three seconds, let go, let it beep eight times, and then it'll go right to the setup. So that's kind of cool that it does that. Alright, as you get something telling the system memory's changed. Alright, so it's still doing the typical uh, Ryzen deal where, you know, sometimes it's going to boot and then boot again and that seems to freak a lot of people out let's see it started to boot and it restarted and it took a little while but now it's uh, as you can tell it's booting up they seem to do that anytime you make some changes yeah it's doing it again 
It's probably trying to learn the RAM. There we go. Yeah, it just had to learn the RAM. I still haven't figured out how to get the setup on here. I'm going to have to look that up. I mean, I thought it was F11. Normally on HPs, I always thought it was F11 or Control F11. I haven't tried that one yet. And believe it or not, this thing does not have an SSD. And I think he said he paid like... It was like 650 bucks for this. Um, to me, you know, you, you can build something much faster, much better, and uh, more upgradable for that amount of money. But, you know, you're paying for the name and I guess, you know, everything that comes with it. All right, so there we go. You can see, boom, we're in Windows. So this one was a success, thank God. And uh, now I just want to get out of here. Well, it's showing uh, 16 gigs of RAM. But I still can't get into setup on this fucking thing. Alright, so it's F10 to get into setup. And let's go to system information. Oops. My keyboard's sideways, so it's a little tricky here. Alright, 16 gigs of RAM. Alright, so it's only running at 2133, and I don't see anywhere in here where we're going to be able to actually change that because you know it's it's proprietary this isn't you know enable xmp is basically it's a form of overclocking and of course you're not going to be able to do any of that on here but it's now 16 gigs of ram and dual channel and uh the other guy that was that was selling this this kit right here um he, you know that he upgraded to to this viper steel the, the uh corsair kit that he had he was selling for a really good price so uh you know that can't really be beat and 16 gigs in dual channel, so this guy will be much happier now. And if he ever does upgrade, because he was talking about, you know, getting a different system and stuff. He's got, you know, some DDR4-3200 for it. Um, yeah, there's really nothing else uh, that can be changed on here. Go to advanced. Yeah, there's nothing here. So, it is what it is, but anyways... Uh, He's up and running. He's got 16 gigs of RAM and dual channel. Uh, this is a 2400G, by the way. That's in here. And they did add a, a GPU to it, which I'm probably like a 550. But um, I, I don't know. You know, this is probably, you know, I think he said he paid 650 bucks for the system here. And uh, yeah, I'm not so sure that, that I would have paid that for it. For 650 bucks, you can build a much better, more upgradable system. But, you know, sometimes it's nice to get everything all in one package, and you just plug it in and go, and, you know, until you run into an issue flashing your BIOS. But, it, like I said before, it's nice that they did include the uh, uh, the BIOS recovery option on this motherboard, and it was pretty easy. It took a while, but it was pretty easy to do, so that's a bonus, too. Uh, he should be all set now. So, uh, if you guys have, uh, if you guys brick your BIOS on your HP what was this, a 690 gaming PC from Walmart, uh, now you know how to fix it.